Hey there fellow Capsuleers, moon mining enthusiasts and curious onlookers. I'm Reload, bringing you all the information about the brand new refineries that are going to become available once Lifeblood expansion goes live. In just a few days, the mechanics of moon mining is going to change dramatically in EVE Online. It's a change from passive income into something way more interactive and engaging. But before we get into refineries themselves, it's a good time to mention that moon scanning is also going to change. We will have a brand new survey probe launcher with three different variants of survey probes available. These are the Quest, Discovery and Gaze survey probes. These will differ by their volume and the time it takes to gather survey data. The mechanics of moon scanning itself is very simple. Just warp and align to the moon and then launch a survey probe. You don't have to wait at the moon for the results to populate. So you can initiate the scan of all the moons in the solar system while waiting to receive the data. The results that you get will comprise of the familiar asteroid belt ore as well as the new moon ore variants. I will leave the overview of the new moon ore for the next video. But for now, let's take a look at the difference between the two refineries that are going to be available to us. The medium refinery, Athanor, will have a 2% bonus to refining yield of all variants of ore and ice, and additionally will have 20% reduction in fuel consumption of the reprocessing and reaction service module. The structure's unpackaged volume is 8,000 cubic meters. That means you can easily transport it in a Tech 1 industrial. The Athanor will have three service slots, as well as three high power, three medium, and one low power slot. Comparatively, the large refinery, Tatara, has 4% bonus to refining yield of all variants of ore and ice, 25% reduction in fuel consumption of reaction service module, and additional 25% reduction in time requirements for reaction jobs. So if you'd like to perform reactions in your refinery, this should be your pick. The unpackaged volume of Tatara is 80,000 cubic meters, so you will need something bigger than a T1 industrial to transport and anchor this one. The large refinery comes with 5 service slots, as well as 5 high power, 4 medium power and 3 low power slots. And there are a few additional upgrades over the Athanor, including the ability to field up to 3 light or support fighter squadrons, and docking availability for the king of mining ships, the Rorcal. To utilize the mining drill on these refineries, you have to anchor them at a specific point on the moon's orbit. It is a different location from the regular warping points of the moon. In the menu it shows up as the mining point, and once you get there you should see the upwell moon mining beacon. At this point you can start the anchoring process. Make sure to pick a valid location to position your structure. You can also rotate it to suit your needs, but you don't have to worry about pointing it in the direction of the moon. The mining drill will be installed on the ring that goes around the refinery. So the mining drill will always point at the moon regardless of the direction that the undock of the refinery is facing. Once you have selected your location, it's time to set the vulnerability hours. The refineries have the longest vulnerability of all the upwell structures. They will be vulnerable to attack for 20 hours per week. So make sure you have very good intel on the system that you're installing these in. The process of anchoring will take 24 hours, at the end of which your structure will be vulnerable for 15 minutes. But once your structure is up, it's time to properly fit it. For the purposes of this video, I am going to install just the mining drill. You have to take control of your refinery, and then simply drag the stand-up moon drill into one of the structure service slots. You will have to have at least 360 fuel blocks in your refinery fuel bay in order to bring the stand-up moon drill online. Once the moon drill is all properly set up, you are ready to schedule the extraction. The whole process of extraction involves blowing up a chunk of the moon and then slowly tractoring it closer to your refinery. This is indicated as the traversal period. The shorter the traversal period, the smaller is the moon chunk that you will extract with the minimum traversal period in this case being 6 days and 28 minutes. The red bar on the graph indicates when the refinery will run out of fuel. You can still initiate the extraction even if you don't have enough fuel to continue it all the way to the end, but make sure that you add enough fuel before you run out. You can adjust the traversal period to match the best time for mining for your corporation. And you can also see if that will line up with your structure vulnerability. Of course, the extraction scheduler will also show you the estimated volume and price of the ore that you will mine. 
So let's activate the extraction and watch the beautiful visuals of the moon drill in action. So just like that, a piece of moon was extracted, and now it's on its way towards the refinery. Once the traversal period is complete, you can fire the moon drill again to fracture the extracted moon chunk. If you don't fire the drill, the extracted moon chunk will dissipate eventually on its own. But in that case, you'll be missing another beautiful display of fireworks. After this explosion, you're free to start mining all of the floating ore, and you can restart the extraction once again. With the lifeblood expansion of Fall 2017, you'll be able to use the moon drill in Nullsec and Lowsec. In the later expansions, moon mining capabilities will be extended to wormholes and select high-sec systems. The presence of these refineries at the moons will surely fuel conflict, making it a very exciting time to be an industrialist in EVE Online. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please type your message below. I'm Reload, and I'll see you at a moon mining op near you.